and I got this light right over me. I probably should turn this around. Let's see. Good morning, good morning. <laughs> good to see you, good to see you. I'm going to try to do this. I hope you guys can tell that I'm sleepy. I haven't slept in a few days. Hello, hello. <laughs> I got good news for you. Good news, good news, good news, good news. And the good news is uh, not a secret to some people. And the good news is something that a lot of people just don't realize is really available to us. But I know something that some of you don't know. And I'm going to tell you that in today's lesson. A couple of announcements before we get started. Um, um, so you guys, I, said, I didn't give you a homework assignment last week, but the week before I did. Um, and I know we had some technical difficulties, so maybe you didn't get it. But it didn't get turned in. What you're supposed to do if you saw your outlines from them, you were supposed to um, study First Peter chapter 5. I'm sorry, chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. And you were supposed to study it in different translations and read it. And you were supposed to just give me your thoughts on what it meant to you. I wasn't looking for an essay. I wasn't looking for anything long. I wanted you to, to turn in what you thought about that passage from different perspectives in, in, in different translations. So... I want to know what part of that passage moved you the most. So it didn't have to be a whole page or anything like that. It could have just been a thought, a paragraph, a sentence. That would have been fine. But you guys did not, you missed that assignment, all of you. So I'm going to give you guys another week to get that done. First Peter chapter 3, verses 1 through 7. That's what I need. And um, how did your um, July hobby project go? In July, I asked you all to start um, look into a new hobby. And just see, you know, what something you've never tried before and see what that does for you. And the reason for that in this marriage prep class is when you're married, you cannot let yourself get lost in the other person, in your spouse. You can't let yourself um, be all about the other person. I know that it's been said a million times that marriage is about serving the other person and giving to the other person. Yes, this is true. But marriage is also about you still being you, you still enjoying your life and the things that you like to do because your spouse may love golf and you may hate it. You can try it, but you don't have to go golfing with your spouse if you can't stand it. So last week's um, last month's project was just something to get you to do something new or even to do something you used to do that you don't do anymore. OK, so and the, the final announcement is September 2nd is a holiday weekend. And I need you all to let me know if you would like a break. We usually take breaks. Thanks for the heart. I love you too. Um, we usually take breaks on major holiday weekends and on every fifth Saturday we take a break. So I don't know if you guys um, would like the holiday weekend of, of Labor Day off or not. So shoot me an email and let me know. For those of you who are our guests today to Sincer Ministries Live, I am Minister Keisha Rand of Sincer Ministries, and this is our Saturday class, which is part of the Esther Project program. Esther is spelled with an A as in aesthetic. And what we do in this program is a year-long discipleship program helping you to prepare for marriage because the reason I believe with all my heart that so many marriages fail is because most of us do not prepare for it. And no premarital counseling is not preparation. It is counseling. Preparation is giving you teaching of exactly what you need to do. So today um, I have a word of encouragement for you, which is what the good news is that I talked about. And I want to pray for you and move on from there. Father God, thank you so much for everything that you're doing in our lives. Thank you for being in our midst for there are more than two of us gathered in your name right now. We are learning from you. We are gleaning from you. We are pining after you. We adore you, Lord. We know that you are our husbandmen. We know that we are the bride of Christ. We know that we are in a covenant marriage relationship with you. And so you are the first and foremost person that we devote ourselves to. For better or for worse, Lord, in sickness or in health, for richer or for poor, no matter what, come what may. We are yours and you are ours and we love you. So Lord, as we prepare ourselves for marriage, 
And as we encourage ourselves about what marriage really is about, we thank you for being the one who instituted marriage. And we will not, no, no enemy, no circumstance, no sad story, no shocking situation from other people make us release and give up on the hope of a great marriage. So we thank you, Lord God, and we give you praise. And we ask you to teach us, Lord, by your sweet Holy Spirit from your word today. In Jesus' mighty name, who died that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Let that abundant life flow today. Amen? Okay, so the good news is, and I'm just giving you this as a warning. I know good news does not always come with a warning. But I have to warn you, because everybody else is giving you warnings that marriage is work. Marriage is hard. Marriage is, oh, it takes a lot out of you. It's a whole new life. You don't understand if you've never been married. Oh, you're not married, so you don't get it. And then you've heard all this. You've heard all this for years. You've seen some things. You've experienced some things. You've been heartbroken over seeing other people's lives broken by divorce. You probably, even in your own homes growing up, saw your parents have their spouts and their spats or whatever. But I want to warn you about marriage in a different way. Marriage just might be awesome. Marriage just might be the greatest thing ever. Did you know that, number one, marriage was the very first institution after the institution of work? And work was supposed to be a great experience. It wasn't supposed to be a cursed thing. We weren't supposed to work by the sweat of our brows. We weren't supposed to be on the clock all those hours working 24-7. If you have your own business, then there's no way you were supposed to got meant for you to work that hard. Right now I'm helping my family. We have a big old project this weekend where we're doing a um, a festival. Because uh, my family on my husband's side, they are in the food industry up here. And there's a big, giant three-day food festival. So we've all been cooking. I was up last night um, till 4. So this morning till 4 o'clock, um, making giant cobblers. <laughs> blueberry <laughs> so but those were done and I knew I didn't want to do it later so those out the way so yeah I look a little tired I sound a little raspy but I was not canceling class today there is no way my spirit is fine um I want to just share with you just just a couple of things to help you grasp this thing so in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, we all know this so well, right? We study this, it encourages us, we get excited about it, and we say, yeah, that's me. But I want to show you how the Lord showed this to me, if you don't mind. If you can turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 4 and verse 9, I want to read just the very first line, the very first statement. And it says, two are better than one. And for some reason, when we see that, we just immediately think that's about friendship. And so some of us, we like the idea of marrying our best friend. I hear that a lot. And that's sweet and that's wonderful. But when you're in a relationship with a, a member of the opposite sex and it is a close, tight relationship, that can be pretty much almost a dangerous risk because you don't know if you're going to marry that person and you should not become friends with someone thinking that maybe one day we might, you know, but that's another conversation about having really close friends. Cause once you get married, you know that that close friendship has got to come to an end. If you're friends with a member of the opposite sex, it's got to, you cannot be in a close tight relationship anymore, but that's another lesson. That's another conversation today. I want to just give you this message and I want you to, the line that I just read to you in Ecclesiastes is that two are better than one. Here's what I want you to take away from this. That when you are in a marriage, there's a blessing on marriage that is different than the blessing that is on those who are not married. Those who are not married are still blessed. Those who are not married are still loved by God. Those who are not married are still able to accomplish great and wonderful things. But there is a special blessing on marriages because God did that first. He, he wanted that to be a powerful thing before there was church, before there was ministry, before there was corporations, before there was these great big goals and dreams. Man had a purpose and marriage made that purpose come to fruition. That's what it was supposed to do. 
He needed help. He needed companionship. He needed someone to be with him. If he just needed a co-worker, God would have given him a co-worker. You see what I'm saying? If he just needed a friend, God would have given him just a buddy. If he just needed, you know, somebody to talk to, I mean, God would have provided that too. But God wanted someone who can encompass everything. In marriage, you have someone who can be it all. They can be just as close to you and closer than a, than a, than a sibling. They can be just um, closer to you than your best friend. They can be um, as loving and caring and nurturing as a mother. They can be as strong and protective as a father. They can be just as funny and wild as a cousin. I can go through all the different relationships that we have, that we adore, that we cling to. And I can just tell you this. i got to just tell you, you will find that in marriage. You will find that person who will be all that and more to you, right? But if you don't know that, if you just see marriage as just this thing, this hard thing that, oh, I have to strive to get in a marriage and then I have to strive to stay in a marriage. And if it doesn't work, I have to try to get over it. No, no, you don't. No, you don't. Trust me when I tell you, because God was the one who started it. Hear me well. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one who started this thing called marriage. He's the one who knows how to end it, end it well. He is the one who is the beginning of this thing, and he is the one who can bring it to pass in the way that he intended it to be. You guys have got to change your minds. You have to change your minds. This one word, this one word, two are better than one. Two are better than one. Your spouse can be a counselor for you. Not to, to the point where they have to be a professional, but that, that what you need from a counselor, one who listens to you, one who can be objective, one who can hear you out and give you sound advice and counsel. Yet that, that spouse can be all of that for you. Just be prepared for this now. Marriage just might be awesome. We keep hearing how terrible it is. You keep watching these these psychiatrists on TV and these, these talk shows and you hear all the worst of the worst of the worst. I want to tell you, not based on my experience, not based on the experience that I've seen other people, but based on God's word, two are better than one. Do you believe that? Do you believe that two are better than one? Do you believe that it is possible that God can actually bless that thing called marriage? Because he started it. Thank you. Give me some amens. Give me some amen hearts. Do you believe that marriage is an awesome thing? Why do we want to get married in the first place? I saw a movie. No, two movies. It was called Why Get Married or Why Did I Get Married? Why, why Should I Get Married or Why Did I Get Married? Something like that. I saw those marriages. They, those movies were terrible. They were terrible. There was nothing good about that. And that did nothing to, 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 to help me want to get married or want to be married or anything. It made me think, yeah, who needs all that drama? Who needs all of that? Nobody. But guess what? You can have all of that and not be married. Marriage does not compound it. Marriage does not make life worse. Marriage does not make relationships harder. Marriage is just another relationship that actually creates let me slow down because I'm getting excited. <laughs> Marriage can actually fulfill all the other relationships. So if you've never had a sibling, guess what? You're going to have the best brother or the best sister in the world when you get married. <laughs> Let me just tell you, if you've had a rocky relationship in your family, you're going to have the best relationship, family relationship. You can create a new family when you get married. Create your own lineage. Create your own line, your own family line. Have your own family crest. It starts with you and your spouse. Whatever happened in the past is past. This is a new king and queen, a new reign, a new tribe, a new clan, starting with you and your spouse. So no matter what happened in your past, I don't care if your mom and dad divorced. I don't care if divorce has run in your family for years. I got good news for you. Marriage is awesome. Be prepared for that. Stop looking at what happened to everybody else and what went wrong with everyone else. Stop looking at all the statistics. Stop looking at all the, the, the divorces. Stop looking at that. Look at what God said. He said two are better than one. Period. The end. If I can get you to wrap your head around that, you won't be so knotted up when it comes to going into a new relationship. And you won't be in such a, a frenzy about losing someone that you think might be the one. No, if they don't want to be with you, let them go. Marriage is too great for you to settle for somebody who doesn't want to be with you. 
And don't allow someone to just settle for you. You can do better too, okay? Don't sell yourself out. Marriage can be awesome, but you got to be prepared for that. Be prepared by being in faith. Be prepared by trusting God that when he says two are better than one, he means it. And then in this passage, he gives you several reasons. For example, they have a good reward for their labor when two are together. If one falls, the other will pick up his companion, right? I'm just reading through here. For um, if he's alone, if someone is alone when he falls, there's no one to pick him up, to help him up, okay? Oh, also, if two lay down together, guess what? They will keep warm. But how can one be warm alone? Oh, my goodness. Though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. You all know the passage in Ecclesiastes 4. You know what it says. You know how awesome it is. But this is a promise. When God speaks something, it is so. His word would not return to him void. When God says something, it is. He says two are better than one. So stop putting off marriage. Stop acting like marriage is such a hard thing to grasp. Stop acting like, I don't know if I can do this. Marriage is not for me. I don't think I can handle all the issues in marriage. You're handling everything else. You're handling all the hard bosses. You're handling the tough co-workers. You're handling that brother or, or sister you can't get along with. You're handling overbearing parents. You're handling the hurt from divorce or from a past relationship. You're handling everything else in life. Stop believing the lie that marriage is so much different and so much harder than everything else on the planet that you don't think you'll ever get married. There are too many of you who are still not married. You should have been married a long time ago. God would love for you to be married because when you're married, it's better because he said so. Not because I said so. When you're married, it's a blessing on it. That's not on those who are alone. The blessing of being warmer. The blessing of not being alone. The blessing of having somebody to fight with you. The blessing of having somebody to help you if you fall. That's what marriage is. That's what it's supposed to be. And that's what it really is when you have a real marriage. You've got somebody on your side. Someone who has promised to be on your side. To have your back. Does that mean you will never disagree? Come on now. I don't have to answer that question. You know there will be disagreements because you are free to disagree in a marriage. You are free to have an opinion. You are free to speak your mind. You are free to be as Adam and Eve were. Be naked and unashamed. That means it's all laid out. All of your feelings. All of your issues. All of your mistakes. All of your flaws. All of your good side. All the things you can be proud of yourself. Be proud. wants to see you finish that degree or whatever it is that you have set your heart to do, start that business. End a business. Your spouse wants to see you come away from those people who are giving you a hard time and making you miserable. Your spouse wants to help you find a new job. Whatever it is, your spouse has you. Stop believing a lie that marriage is not an awesome thing because it is. Because God says it is. God says it is. The reason so many of you are not married. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to try to Keep very still. I'm actually holding my phone today. Okay. Um, and, and by the way, if Periscope pops out, I'll just cut my phone off and restart. And you guys just give me a second and just pop back in. We're going to finish this, okay? Because I have heard this for so long. And I was guilty of it too some several 30 years ago. I saw so many bad marriages. I saw so many people mistreating each other. I saw so many people from leadership down. I mean public figures. I mean pastors that I personally saw and witnessed mistreating their wives, mistreating their wives. I saw wives totally disrespecting their husbands. And I don't mean where they disagreed with them. I don't mean where they weren't acting like little puppies walking behind them. I mean disrespecting them where they are, yelling at them in, in public, calling them names, taking their credit cards and them saying, you can't handle money. I mean, just totally disrespect, treating their husbands like they were children. I've seen it all, and so have you. But that does not mean that the blessing of God is not for you. I'm just taking one line, one phrase, one passage, one text, one word, because from the Lord, sometimes that's all you need is one word. The word is two are better than one. It's not hard to grasp That's not a difficult statement. That's not a deep thing, but it is. It's not hard for you to understand, is it? Two are better. 
So stop withholding yourself from marriage. Stop saying no to everybody you see who doesn't seem to be good enough for you. Stop denying yourself the ability to, t- 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 to even interview a couple of people. You don't have to just focus on one person at a time. Because you, until you get married, no, you don't. No, you don't. Because you can be with that one person for 5, 6, 17 years. And the relationship doesn't go anywhere because you're afraid that you've wasted your time. You're afraid that you've invested so much of yourself. you shared your heart. you poured out your soul. You've gone through several things together. You've shared experiences together, good and bad. Your families adore you, adore both of you. And why wouldn't you marry this person? Because... They're not who you want to marry or you are not who that person wants to marry. So don't lock yourself into that person anymore. You're holding yourself off for a hope that maybe this person might just want to marry you when actually marriage is too awesome to put it on hold like that for someone else to get their life together, for someone else to get their emotions and decide that you are worthy of all of their time and not just some of it. They want to just hang out with you every day and take up your time on the phone and send you all their texts and spend all their emotional baggage on you. And then they want to move on. And what God is saying to you now is that that is not his plan. I want to give you an example. I want you to turn to the book of Genesis, okay? I want to give you an example of why it's important to get into the blessing and move with it. Be prepared for this, okay? Because if this was to happen today, if this was to happen today just like this, I want you to be prepared that it's okay to make a move when God is moving. It's okay to follow him when he is operating like this. When God wants you to step forward out there, I don't want you to hold back and say, "Mm, uh, let's wait, let's see. You all have been hearing the message of wait for years. Wait on marriage. Wait, 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 wait. What are you waiting for exactly? Oh, the perfect person to come along, right? Or for your life to be in perfect order. Sure, for you to be completely out of debt. Yeah, and then to get that second and third and fourth degree. Oh, and to have the right job and buy your own house and have it paid off first. Woo! Let me tell you something. The reason why a lot of those things in your life are not together is because you need that blessing of someone being with you to do it. Because two are better than one. I didn't make this up. That's what God said. That's what he said. When he said about Adam, he's the one who said it's not good that the man be alone. Adam didn't say that. Adam didn't go to God and say, God, I'm lonely. God, I'm cold. God, every time I fall, nobody can help me get up. I mean, the buffalo can't help me. and, And the elephant, he tries to pick me up, but the elephant's busy. Come on now. That's not Adam saying that. This was God saying, hmm. Everything else he made was good. Oh, the birds, good. Look at the clouds in the sky, good. The sun, the moon, good. Everything was good. Everything was good. Except for the fact that the man was alone. That, mm mm-mm, not good, not good. And some of you have allowed fear to tell you what to do for far too long. Some of you have allowed other people's drama to keep you from the blessing of marriage. So I want you to look at Genesis chapter 44. I mean, 24. Genesis chapter 24. We all are familiar with the story of Isaac and Rebecca. But I want you to look at, um, what did I say, 24? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want you to start with... Hmm... Let's start with verse 29. I don't want to read the whole story to you. How much time do we have? Okay. We got about 25 minutes. Well, we got we, we have a little bit of time. Okay, so up to this point, Abraham had sent his servant to go back to his homeland to find a bride for his son so that, you know, his son could carry on the lineage and all of this. But he didn't want him to have just anyone, but someone from 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 from. That 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 tribe from that um, yeah. So after he met the servant met the woman he had prayed, the angel of the Lord went before him, and the appointed woman uh, did everything that he prayed she would do before he met her. And so we all know the story, but I want you to look at some of this. Look at verse twenty nine. 
with all that happened, it says, so the young woman ran and told her mother's household these things. She ran and told her mother's household these things. Let me tell you what I did when I realized that my husband would, would most likely be the man I would marry. It didn't take long. I'll tell you my full story later, but I do know once he and I had pretty much been sure in our hearts that we wanted to pursue a marriage, we wanted to skip the dating and actually go into an actual courtship, ask the hard questions, see if we could handle each other's issues, see if we really wanted to pursue what we were feeling in our hearts and what we were um, wanting in our souls. Once I made that decision, you know what I did? I called my mother. I called my mother. And then I called my first lady of my church. And then I called my godmother. I ran to let them know I am about to enter into a relationship with someone. And I believe this may be the person I may end up marrying. Because I'm not going to waste my time on just going from person to person. There were five guys at the time. There were five gentlemen that all had an interest in me at the same time. And I just kind of listened to them. You know, they hung around me an awful lot. They told me all about themselves. And I would just listen. I call it my interviews. The man that I married was the worst on the list. <laughs> he did not, you know, he was like number five. He was all the way at the bottom. He was not at the top one at all. I am so sorry that you had to go through that. I can tell you that from experience. Really? Oops, did I put my finger on the mic? I'm sorry. Is that better? Is that better? Can you hear me? I hope so. I have my thumb. I'm holding my phone. Sound, can you hear me? Okay, great. I'm sorry. I have my thumb on the microphone. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I actually broke off the relationship with, um, with him for a couple of times because the, his circumstances. It wasn't that he wasn't awesome sauce. It wasn't that I wasn't crazy about him. It was like, dude, you got to get your life together. <laughs> you need to make some decisions because right now it's not steady ground. So the other guys that I had been interviewing, once I made a decision for my for, 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 for him, I knew that mm -mm, Patrick, there's something about his spirit that was so strong that resonated with me so clearly. I wanted to know what it was. I told my mother, I said there, I have the same idea that Moses had when he saw a bush on fire that wasn't burning. I said, there's something about this man. I don't know what it is. He got some circumstances in his life that should be burning him up, but he's still standing He's still an amazing, awesome, incredible man of God. So I want to see what this is. That I feel such a strong connection to him. It's like, you know when you are putting together pieces to a puzzle? I don't know if any of you are puzzle workers, if you like making puzzles. But there's something about those last few pieces. You see them. You, you, you know you only got a few more pieces. All the hard pieces you've already put in place. You know, you put the borders on. You put the corners on. Once the corners are set and the borders are set, it gets easier and easier and easier and easier. And then you see there's only a few pieces left. And when you put that last piece in, you always click it. You always just click it in there. And it's just, boom. Finally, I'm done. That's what it was when I met my husband. Something just, like, that's it done. Everything, all the pieces just came and fit and I could see the whole picture of my life with him. So I immediately, just like this young woman, just like Rebecca, I ran and told my family, I told my household, told the people who mattered. Okay. Now, as soon as this happened, verse 29, now Rebecca had a brother whose name was Laban and Laban ran out to the man by the well. Laban ran too. Follow me here. Follow me here. See what I'm saying? This is not something that you wait and see. This is not something that you become apathetic about. Whatever will be, will be. No, marriage is awesome. You got to prepare yourself. Get ready to move. Get ready to seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon him while he is near. If God is moving your heart for marriage, get ready to look. Get ready to be, to be looked at. Get, be, get prepared for something awesome. And don't do anything if it's not clicking, if it's not solid, if you're not good. 
if you're not at peace, but if you have the peace of the Lord, and if God has spoken to your heart, a yes, run, get that thing done. Get your life in, in position to receive that blessing because two are better than one. Now, what happens next? Okay, so I'm going to skip down a little bit. He saw the jewelry that she had been presented with because you should always present um, uh, the prospective person that you're going to marry, gentlemen. You should always present her with a way of knowing, letting her know that you are are going to take good care of her, okay? So gifts are very important. Taking her out to eat is very important, not just traditionally, because she needs to know why should she marry you. She needs to know that you're going to be there for her, take care of her, and be able to handle her heart, okay? So I want you to move down, and I want you to come all the way down to verse 50. Okay, because Laban had a conversation with your servant. He wanted to know what the what is. He wanted to know if everything is everything and all of that. Verse 50 says, Then Laban and Bethuel answered and said, The thing comes from the Lord. We cannot speak to you either good or bad. Okay. They knew that it was from God. They knew that God was moving. And so her family couldn't say anything good or bad. They couldn't offer any advice. They couldn't. They couldn't. Okay. So here's what they said. And oh, just a note on that, your family, they really can't say anything good or bad when God is moving in your life concerning the person that you marry. If your family has a whole lot to say, you might want to listen a little to what they're saying because once God is in that thing and God is moving on it, on you for a particular person, your family really don't have anything to say. They may be mad, sad, or excited, but really, they really can't say anything when God has already spoken. What are they going to say? Okay. Let God be true and every man be a liar, right? So let's move on. Let's move on. Verse 51. Here's Rebecca before you. Take her and go. Let her be your master's son's wife as the Lord has spoken. As the Lord has spoken. Please don't leave God out of this. Please don't just go find somebody and just go marry somebody and you leave God out. Please don't wait until the wedding day to ask for God's blessing. Please don't wait until the, 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 the preacher stands before you and pronounces a blessing over your life before you get God's word on this thing. Get his word on it now. Lord, your word says two are better than one. So you told us to put you in remembrance of your word. You said that you, oh God, will watch over your word to perform it. Lord, if two are better than one, as you said, and I believe you're the author and finisher of my faith, is this the one that I should be tooed up with? Is this the one who will make my life better? Is this the one who would it be easy for me to make their life better, his or her life better? Is he the one that I can make his life better? And am I the one, I mean, and, and I'm the one that he would make my life better for him. You see what I'm saying? You should be both making each other's lives better because two are better than one because they have a reward, a good reward for their labor. It's not just one person doing everything. It's not one person giving everything. One person doing all the listening. One person's doing all the, the working. One person's doing all the, the taking care of the household. One person's doing all the earning the income. One person's doing all of the, the legwork for building up the family. One person's taking care of the kids alone. It should not be that one person is doing everything in any area. Two of you have a reward, a good reward for your labor. You both are laboring. You both are doing something amazing. You both are building. You both are creating. You both are establishing something. Now, if marriage is work, then it's that kind of work. The kind of work that's building, establishing, creating, moving, operating, leaving a legacy. That's the kind of work that marriage is. And that's a good thing. Just be prepared for that. Marriage is an awesome thing. It really, really is. It really is. And I hope you listen to this message every time the enemy tells you, oh, you're not ready. You're not ready for marriage. Every time the enemy of our souls speaks to your soul and tells you that marriage is too hard, listen to this message again. I'm going to put it on YouTube so that it, it won't um, disappear because Periscope, Periscope um, deletes messages after so many months. But make sure you, you subscribe to my YouTube page so that you can get this message, okay? Because you guys have got to know this. And I'm sorry I didn't get all fancied up for you today, but I have been working constantly all week long and again
work is not over because the festival ends at midnight on Sunday. So we are working till midnight every night. And then I have to go to my regular um, work in the mornings directing the educational program. And then I have Sincere Ministries work in the afternoons and at night. <laughs> so I look a little tired. I sound a little tired, but my spirit is fine. Oh, <laughs> I can't. Guys, I'm glad. I'm, thank you for that. I appreciate that because I refuse to make excuses. I've made a commitment. And if I can teach you nothing else about marriage, I've got to teach you that things happen. Come what may. My engine died two days ago. So I'm at my cousin's house right now so that they can take me to work without having to come all the way to my house and take me to work. Because where I work, there's no bus system. And so we're at, we're at my cousin's house. This is not my house. But it's okay. It's okay. God is amazing. God is amazing. God is amazing. God is amazing. God is truly amazing. So we're going to we're gonna get another car or something. I might rent a car this week to make it a little bit easier for everybody. Preferably I can find a good sale. And hey, if you guys know of a good car rental sale, send me a link. <laughs> um, so, as I was saying, <laughs> two are better than one. Hold to that word if you don't know anything else. Speak that word if the enemy tells you anything different. When someone says to you, oh, honey, marriage is hard. You need to, whoo, take your time, honey. Just don't, 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 whoo. When you hear that, you keep speaking what God says. He says two are better than one. He says it's good that the, it's not good that a man be alone. He says that he has blessed marriages, that he's the one who seals it in Malachi chapter 2. He's the one who is expecting something great out of your marriage. He's the one that's there in the midst of you. He's the one who's saying that a threefold cord is not quickly broken. What is the third part of the threefold cord, ladies and gentlemen? He is God. Everything that God ordains has a triune basis to it because we were created in his image. So all these people that you see who may not be perfect for you, you got to understand that man that you think is not all that, he's still created in the image of God. That woman that you see that she doesn't have the curves you want or she doesn't have the personality that you like, she's still created in the image of God. So don't disrespect people just because you're not attracted to them, just because they're not what you think you want, just because they're not at the top of your list. Guess what? The man of those five guys that I was inter interviewing who all expressed an interest in me, my husband was at the bottom of the list, but the man who was at the top, he passed away. Okay? You don't know what the future is of any of these people, but God knows your future. Focus on your future. You keep wondering why he didn't call back. Next time you see him, tell him thank you. Thanks for not calling. He made your choice much easier. Okay? He doesn't know you're alive. You should be glad, okay? Don't let anybody string you along. Or especially, don't let him make you feel like he's interested in you and he's playing games. He's only interested in you on the side or in the background behind closed doors. No one else knows about it but you. He's only spending time with you when there's no one else around. You don't need to spend time with him. He's not serious. Not about you. God, send me someone who is serious about you and serious about me. Send me someone who adores you and who will adore me. And I can adore. It's always got to be three. Pray in threes. Pray in threes. God, I want someone who loves you, who loves themselves, and who loves me. God, I want someone that I will love. Cover all three bases. Cover all sides of this thing. Get the whole triune, triangular relationship going strong now in your prayer life now. Because two are better than one. Marriage is an awesome thing. Be prepared for that. Stop being prepared for the worst. Stop acting like life is full of daily storms. It is not. Marriage life is not a daily storm you have to endure. So you get the extra food and you hunker down and you uh, board up the windows and you... Oh, I covered the mic again. I'm sorry. And you do all these things to prepare. You know how a few years ago we had a bad hurricane storm coming through. I think it was 2010. And we went and had to get food and put it in bins. We had to get extra blankets. We had to get flashlights and batteries. We had to, um, uh, you know, do everything we could. Oh, oh, water. They told us to get water, you know, lots and lots of drinking water. 
and we're doing everything you're telling us to do because we were preparing for a storm. Some of you are treating your marriage quest and your marriage journey as if it is a storm you have to prepare for. You have got to be prepared for it to be wonderful. Be prepared for it to be bliss. Be prepared for it to be amazing, incredible, and a blessing because it is. That is the gospel. That is the good news. That's what Jesus died for. That's the abundant life he gave us. He provided for us. Take it. Marriage is not an everlasting storm. With lightning and thunder and wind and rain and, and tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes. That's not what marriage is. Marriage is not a war zone. You got to put on your gear and strap up and you got to have a helmet on. That's not what marriage is. Oh my goodness. Who lied to you? And you kind of know it. That's why you still want to do it. But you're not sure so. That's why you're not. You, you want it, but you don't want it. You're... Seeking it, but you're not looking too hard. You want to be noticed, but don't look my way. You're conflicted. You're unstable because your faith is not focused. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. You better believe and get in faith right now. You have got to stop it with the doubt. Stop it with the vacillating. Stop it with the questioning God. Stop it with the maybe this and maybe that. Stop it with the God is not my season or I'm waiting on God. Stop it. God already provided the blessing of marriage. Go for it. Run. Run and tell your family when you meet the one that clicks, that makes your spirit go, yes, that makes your soul go, Oh, this is what I've had this. I've been waiting for this drink of water for a long time and I'm not thirsty anymore. Run and seal it. Run and let the blessing of God flow out of that thing. Run and start creating your legacy. Run, do the work of ministry in it. Run and make this thing alive. Run. Because marriage is awesome. So be prepared by having on your running shoes. Be prepared. Have your best clothes ready. Have your best ideas in place. Have the names of your children, at least the ideas of them. But be prepared for the awesomeness that marriage is. Stop waiting for someone perfect to come along. My husband was not the perfect one in my eyes at the time. But guess what? God said this. He told this to the prophet when he went to David's house and David's father said, here's my son. Look at him. Look at my oldest. Look at my next oldest. Look at the next one. Look at the next one. How about the next one? Well, what about this one? And God said, no, because you look on the outside. God looks at the heart. So you pray in threes. God, I pray that you show me his heart. And I pray that you show him my heart and I pray that you show us your heart always pray in threes because in a marriage relationship there's three there's three a threefold cord is not quickly broken start building the cord you know how to make a plait a braid a rope with three cords start you have to start it it doesn't just exist someone has to actually braid it start braiding now start your prayers in threes now because two are better than one and can I put it to you this way as the Holy Spirit's giving it to me? You think you're just having that one relationship with God, right? That one relationship you have with God is awesome, isn't it? Your worship life is amazing. You go into church, you read in your word, you and God, me and you, God, you and me, God, me and you. Woo, we are awesome, 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 awesome relationship with God. Oh, it's not religion, it's relationship. I love the Lord, I love the Lord. But can I just tell you, imagine two of you instead of just that one relationship you have with God, two of you worshiping God together in the mornings, two of you in the word, tag teaming off each other. What verse you read? Oh, I've been reading this. Oh, tell me about that. What did God tell you? Ooh, what did the Holy Spirit show you? Woo, did you read this verse this morning? Oh, can you pray for me? The two of you are better than one of you in a relationship with God. Hear me again. This is what the Holy Spirit just gave me now. He just gave this to me. 
Two are better than one. Two in a relationship worshiping God are better than one of you in a relationship with God. So two of you coming into worship. Why? Because the two of you are in agreement. The two of you are inviting him in. He said, where two or more are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst. And if you are gathering, getting married in his name, who's going to be in your marriage? Jesus said he'd be right there. He'd be right there. So as much as I love to worship God alone, it's such a powerful, powerful, compounded and awesome time in God when my husband and I go in prayer together. Because sometimes he says something I didn't even think of. And sometimes I pray something he does say, he don't say nothing but mm, amen. Because two are better than one. This is the gospel. This is the good news. You think Jesus died for you to have a horrible marriage? No. People were already having horrible marriages. And that's why God says, I hate divorce. You are destroying each other. You are ruining each other's lives. You are breaking each other's hearts. You are covering my altar with tears. Malachi chapter 2, I didn't make this up. God says, I see that and I am not happy with it. As a matter of fact, I'm not even going to receive your sacrifice. I'm not answering your prayers because you are breaking my people. You're breaking each other down. You're crushing each other. You already have an enemy. Don't be on his side. Don't act like he does. Question each other. Jealousy of each other. Uh, doubting each other. Pulling each other down. Disrespecting each other. Being hateful to each other. Being rude to each other. Stop. Don't do that. God created you to love each other. He created you to exhibit all nine fruits of his spirit. That he has shed abroad in your heart. His love he shed abroad in your heart by, this, by the Holy Ghost. You have the capability of being the most loving person, being kind, being selfless. You have it in you. It's in you. You are built for it. If you are saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, if you are serving the Lord, if you are following after the Lord Jesus and doing his work and following his ways, you have the ability, you have the capability, you have the tools you need, you have the, 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 the heart to do it. It's in you. You're built for this. Marriage is not going to be hard for you. I don't care what you heard. Marriage is not going to be hard for you. You are going to transition into that thing. It is going to click like a puzzle piece placed just like that. You're going to enjoy it. You're going to be adapted to it. It's going to be a breeze. Better than the best job you've ever had. Better than the best friend you've ever known. Better than the best roller coaster ride you've ever screamed on. <laughs> it is better because God says it's better. So why believe anybody else? Let God be true and every man be a lie. God loves you and he wants you to have a great, abundant life. He wants you to have love because that's all that really matters right now. When you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we all love to quote all the things that love is, right? Can I just read to you what, what, what this says? In the part right after the part that we know so well. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and then I'm going to let you go. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 13, we read through verses 4 through 8, and we stop right at the first part of verse 8 that says love never fails, right? But I want you to look at something else. I want you to look at verse 13. It says, and now abide faith, hope, love. These three, triune blessing again. But the greatest of these is love. Some of you are hoping for marriage. You're hoping for love. But you've left off the third part of this blessing. The third part of this requirement even. You left off the faith. This gospel message today is to build your faith. Because faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. So I have let you hear this word of God today. So that you can have the hope you need. So that your hope can become substance. Your hope can become faith. And you can have the faith you need. To have the love you want. And you will have it. If you believe it. But it's hard to believe that marriage is good. If you never hear anybody tell you the truth. I'm trying to tell you the truth. I'm undercover right now. My husband don't know I'm talking about him. But that man, honey, I'm so glad I chose him. He's downstairs. I am so glad. <laughs> Look, I'm crazy. Woo! But I, I, I'm so glad I married him. He 
he is. Mm -mm -mm. God, God ain't never lied to me. God has never disappointed me. God has never done me wrong. And when he put it in my heart that this man would be a man who would definitely make my life better. He is the one that made my life better. And I think I'm making his better too. I'm trying. Two are better than one because God says so. Take him at his word. Trust him. His credit is good. All you got to do is just put him in remembrance of his word. Pray his word because he watches over his word to perform it. If you can't pray nothing else, Lord, you said two are better than one. I need that blessing right now because right now my husband and I, we're mad. We're this. We're uh, whatever's going on at the time. But remember, storms are temporary. But the rest of your life is not a storm. Try to keep that in mind whenever you think that marriage is going to be hard. Try to keep it in mind whenever you think that marriage is too much. Try to keep that in mind whenever you get overwhelmed and think it's too hard to find somebody. You will not find somebody absolutely perfect and flawless. You know this, so stop it. Get rid of your list and ask God to give you what you need. I didn't know I needed somebody hilarious. I never prayed for that. <laughs> I always prayed for him to have the perfect track record and the perfect financial report and the perfect uh, relationship pass. I, you know, I prayed for all these other things. And what I needed was somebody who is hilarious. That man makes me laugh. I didn't know I needed that. So I never asked for that. See, ask God for what you need. Because, trust me, when you get what you need, what you want is wrapped up in that. Because a lot of what we want really is something that we need. So, I love you guys. That's our time for today. We will not do a Skype session after class today because I have to go help my family. So, please forgive me. I promise I'll make it up to you. Um... Turn your home again. Let's pray and I'll let you go. Father, thank you for this word. Thank you for the truth. Because you told us that if we would come to know the truth, the truth will make us free. Father, make these ladies and gentlemen free to embrace marriage. Free to embrace godly, holy relationships. Because your word says, if we are not walking in holiness, we will not even see you. And we want to see you move. We want to see you move in these lives for those who want to be married. We want to see you move on giving them the right person. And we know you won't speak to them if they're not walking in holiness. We know that holiness means that we are separating ourselves out to do it your way. To be set apart for you. So we can't do what the world does. We can't sleep around. We can't have all these physical interactions with people. We can't um, sit back and say, I'm waiting on God and be in doubt. We need to embrace you in faith and trust you, Lord God. We need to trust you because you don't lie. It is impossible for you to lie. That's what your word says. It's impossible. So if you said two are better than one, it is. If you said it's not good for man to be alone, it's not. If you said that the blessing of the Lord... You don't add any sorrow with it. You add no sorrow with your blessing. Marriage is a blessing, not a sorrow. I ask for every person listening to the sound of my voice that you bless them with an awesome marriage. And I ask that you help them to get prepared as of right now, prepared in their heart, prepared in their soul, and then prepared in their body too. Because some of them only focus on their bodies, getting their bodies in shape, losing weight, gaining weight, whatever it is. They're focusing from the outside in, what they look like, thinking that how they present themselves is what matters, but it's who they are that matters. And let them find out who they are in you. So that when they marry, they marry someone who has his life or her life in you already. And you are in them, and they are in you, in that triune, threefold cord. That is not quickly broken. I pray that there be no brokenness in their marriages. I pray they will not end in divorce. I pray they will not end in anything but in you. Bless them with this, Lord God. This is my prayer. And I pray that they come to know the joy that I have come to know in marriage. I thank you for my marriage. Please, oh God, please, oh God, receive my praise by blessing them with a great marriage too. I thank you for it. I thank you for it. 
and my love for them, Lord God, my love will cast out all of their fears in the name of Jesus who died to give me the authority to make that statement. Amen. I love you guys, but I love my family more. I love my husband more, so I got to go. Have a fantastic week. Behave yourselves. Behave yourselves. And hear God. If God has spoken, can't nobody tell you any different. I got to go.